It is time for expansion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stoneblock 3. And yes, in this episode, we are expanding the base. Well, the base has already been expanded, but we are going to expand it using machines. Not too long ago, we set up this system right here, which will process our ores as soon as I flick this lever on. The ores will start heading into this purification chamber and then through the entire system, giving us ingots. However, it's not a... It's not at all optimal. It actually has many issues, one of which is all of them have uh, sp has speed upgrades, which increases the power consumption. Also, with the way we're inputting items from the exporter from our storage, they are lining up like this. So when the lever is turned on, just like so, it fills them up like this. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, actually never running through the different ones, always focusing on the first, leading to, well, very long waiting time. And that is something else as well. It, it, it takes a long time for this one setup, even though it has all been upgraded with speed upgrades to process all of our ores. So I'm thinking it would be really cool if we had one processing unit per ore. And that's what we're going to be setting up today. So I have expanded the base here with six new slots for basically basically the same setup that we got up there, but one for each ore. Three over here, three over here, and then uh, four smaller sections for this specific setup right here, because some of the ores needs to be treated differently, such as nickel, bauxite, and silver. So that is what we are going to be doing today. We're going to be constantly processing the ores that we're getting. Hopefully, these should never be in the 2000, uh, <laughs> in the 2000 numbers anymore. The ink as well. However, before we get to that, I was playing around with the chickens mod in between episodes. And well, I have added one extra or one new chicken, which is the ender chicken, which now gener uh, produces uh, ender pearls. But I've also been breeding the diamond chicken and the cobalt chicken, that one right there. And I have proof. Um, yeah, <laughs> I have proof. Basically, my cobalt chicken and my diamond chicken are now 10, 10, 10. And the way that you get these is if you take the same type of chicken right here, this is a gunpowder chicken that is one on everything, and I put them in here so they breed with each other, then the output is going to be better than one, one, one is going to be, for example, two, two, maybe three. So that is how you improve your chickens, make them uh, breed them together like so, and do the process over and over again, and eventually you'll get 10, 10, 10 chickens. And as you will be able to see in just a moment, we got this one, with this, which is a 2, 3, 2 chicken, so we can just go ahead and replace that in there, and that will result in an even better chicken, and that way we are able to keep going. Wow, I never cleaned up this stuff, did I? But we are not going to be focusing on chicken breeding today. I have done way too much of that. We're going, like I said, to be focusing on this. And that requires a ton of crafting. But before we do that, I did go ahead and upgrade eight of our dynamos here to the resonant integral components. I am still missing four of them because they are quite quite a bit expensive. I have the hardened glass. I still need to make more aluminum and indarium. Which, yeah, it, it's a process. But we are now generating 1,760 RF a tick. I'm pretty happy with that. But let's get right to it then. I have also made sure that we have stuff like steel and circuits and stuff like that so we can just jump straight into it. So, we of course already have this set up here. This will basically just be moved down. So I need to make this five times more. So that means I need to make five electrolytic separators this one right here, which also requires me to get up some more st uh, some more stuff. All right, here we go. Five of these. Oh, pass me um. There we go. Five electrolytic separators has been made, and we can actually go ahead and place these uh, right off the bat. Am I just gonna? Yeah, I'm actually gonna go ahead and uninstall all of these. I'm gonna steal this. Oh yeah, we also need to, of course, make the uh, accumulators and everything. And the new setups, they are not going to contain any of these speed upgrades. I'm going to probably uh, keep them just for things like the metallurgic infuser when I need to actually convert stuff into other stuff. 
uh, because this will be running, these machines will be running constantly now. So that is pretty cool. I'm very excited for that actually. Uh, but there we go. Everything has been removed. So now we should have six electronic separators, which we can put one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. And yes, I will need to go through every single machine and make sure everything's set up in the GUI, like where things are going. It, it, it's gonna be a big task. However, the next thing that we need is a purification chamber, which to make a purification chamber, we need to make enrichment chambers. So that means I need five of these steel casings. There we go. Purification chamber, enrichment chamber, one, two, three, four, five. And then I need 10 of these, I'm pretty sure. One, two, three, four, five, 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 five. And then purification. Oh, no, wait. Aha, one. And I should be able to just do this actually. Make this easy purificate. What? Ah, there they are. So that's that, 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 and that. Boom. Five of them. I can steal this now. Place these fellas in line. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Next, of course, we need the crusher. And I'm not going to use this one. I use that to like crush down ender pearls and diamonds and other miscellaneous things. So we're just going to go ahead, get. I think I'm done with the purification chamber. Yes. Crusher. Nope. Need more steel casing. Five of those again. I might need to make some more steel and whatnot. We'll see. So that should be one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Perfect. If this goes really, really smoothly, I'll be very surprised <laughs> if I don't run out of something in this process. Next, I need five more enrichment chambers, which means five more steel casing. Oh wow, I've actually not run out yet. I am kind of surprised, but it's a happy surprise. And actually that is, well, we're still missing the four over there, but that is actually the machines with these sections right here done, because I'm not going to make any energized smelters. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm going to be making or using either obsidian furnaces or gold furnaces or something along those lines, because I think maybe just a diamond furnace, furnace even is going to be sufficient connected with our coal because we have so much coal. We're not using enough of this. <laughs> we need to use more, so we might as well hook that up to the system. And I think we're going to start off with some golden furnaces, um, which means we need iron furnaces, which means I need six of these. Then iron. Oh, am I going to have... This might be where I hit a bottleneck. Ooh, nope. I do have enough iron. I made sure to have enough iron for this. And then a six of these. Let me know down below in the comments, by the way, if you enjoyed this crafting process or if you want me to skip it. <laughs> Cut it out. Let me know down below in the comments. But here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And if they're not fast enough, we can always upgrade them to diamond just like so. Well, that's the emerald upgrade. We, we that That's the one. And I was mistaken, that is not the final machine. We still need to make some aquas accumulators. And that's my first bottleneck. I ran out of bronze. That is easy enough to get though. Beautiful. Add that to the obsidian furnaces and this should be done in absolutely no time. And just like that, we got six aquas accumulators. Now I need to find out how I'm going to manage the behind of the machines. And I think I'm going to add a door right here leading into like the back rooms of the machines here. So I need a wall right here. And then this is going to be directly behind the machines, if I'm not mistaken. If I then go ahead and do one, two, three, and then, yep, right there. One, two, three. Yep, right there. Perfect. So that is going to access the machine right there. And this is then where I can do all the piping and all the wiring, etc. I'm actually going to go ahead and take my hammer because that will make this process a whole lot easier. Going to do the same for this other side. Um, hmm, I might actually be able to remove these chickens and replace them with a 10 out of 10 out of 10 chicken and just have one chicken running that. But for now, I suppose I'll have to make do with <laughs> being in the chicken chicken room. Okay, maybe I just need a one out of one out of one chicken. Look at this. Are, I, are they all full? I guess, they, I guess they're all full because they're not having to generate any power at the moment. 
That's good to know. All right, it's time to set the water up for these machines right here, which I think is going to be the easiest to do at this point in time. If we take an aqueous accumulator right there, water, water, this is going to make water, fluid pipe, set this to export, and this should now be generating oxygen. And we're going to set this to dump excess. So when this is full, it's just going to dump whatever is, uh, whatever else gets generated off the hydrogen. And now I can go ahead and repeat that process for all of the machines until I've done it for every single one. It shouldn't be too bad though. It's actually pretty simple. And the cool thing is they don't need power. It's so cool. And the final one, water, water, fluid pipe, boom. All right, that is the only time I'm going to need fluid pipes, I'm pretty sure. There are going to be a few hurdles though. For example, I do want to collect as much of the hydrogen as I possibly can. However, that means I need to lead it all over to something like a chemical tank. Chemical tank. Something like an elite chemical tank or something like that, which, uh, yeah, that's doable. But yeah, I'll, I'll, work on, I'll work on that. I still need to work out a few of these things. Now for the furnaces, I should be able to open config. I should be able to uh, set all these to none and then take the back as fuel input. And then on every single one of them, place an ender drawer with coal uh, added, connected to the coal drawer. So go into this, reset everything. There we go, back is fuel input, place ender drawer. So that for all the other ones. And then of course I will need, I believe this linking tool. Nope, I, <laughs> I need to go up here, punch this. And then I'm pretty sure I right click. Yes. And then just like so, Set the auto input to on and auto output to on as well. And boom, we have coal in the furnaces. Now we of course do need an output for all the different furnaces. So that means I will need to go ahead and make some more ender chests. Like so, I need five. And do I have any red dye? Maybe we need to give it a different dye color. I think coloring it black is going to suit us perfectly. Actually, I'm gonna start with this. Gonna place it here, color this black, there we go, and then all of these will be on the black channel, or the middle one, white, black, white channel, I should say. Now all I need to do is make sure that the furnaces output on the right, and also input on the left from the enrichment chamber. Actually, I think I'm gonna have to place these on top of the furnace, because not only do I need to also provide power to the electrolytic separator, but I also want to take the hydrogen from it in the future at least. So I think putting the chest on the top is probably going to be the best thing to do, even though it doesn't really look the coolest. You know what? If I ever need the hydrogen, I'll probably set it up elsewhere. For now, it's gonna look coolest and best if the chest is on the right. It's going to be the most compact that way. Plus I can always change it. All right, next thing I need to do is go through all of the different machines, such as the enrichment chamber, make sure that the output is set to right and input is set to bottom and auto eject is on. So this one is set, this one is not set to so clear all the sides. Output is right, input is bottom, auto eject on. And I need to do that for all of these. Clear, output, input, auto eject. Now, as I learned the hard way, of course, when dealing with stuff like purification chamber, where you also take in the oxygen, you need to remember that there are two different tabs. So I'm currently in the items uh, config right here. So input on the right, output on the left, and auto eject. Then I need to go into gases, and then I need to say input on the right as well and of course it can't eject that it is i think it is set to default being uh let's just clear this input output auto eject on yeah it's basically set to input on all sides so i really don't need to change that but that is a good thing to keep in mind now for the electronic separator uh, separator we want to make sure that we're in the gases section and then auto eject is on and then we want to output 
the cyan to the left, which is the oxygen, and that is pretty much it, because we're not outputting the hydrogen anywhere, because we set it to dumping excess, so it's going to fill up, and then it's just going to dump the rest. So now I just need to go ahead and do that for the different ones, clear this, auto jack is on, so output cyan to the left, did I do this for right for this one? Yes, I did. All right, cool. And that is all the machines here configured. Now all I need to do, uh, all, quote unquote, is I need to go ahead and give them power. This needs power and these three right here needs power. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and ask for some cables. And then I'm going to, I think, I'm pretty sure, if I take an ender cell starter, say I place it right here, here, I think. Uh, no, not there. Above. Right there. I think I can set it to redstone. Uh, yes, I can basically toggle the redstone so I can make a bunch of levers. And then I can control whether or not power is being sent, I'm pretty sure, from the ender cell. Just from controlling it with these levers. So each segment will basically be able to be turned off. And I think with redstone on, it will only work with redstone on. We are about to find out if I connect this to here. Well, it does have power. I actually need something where it needs to generate power. Um, hmm. I guess we can only test this when it's ready to go. Now, this is a complicated thing right here. Actually, I think the best thing for me will be to put the fluid pipe underneath here and then tell it to put there because then I can simply run the energy cable right there and it's going to be a whole lot easier. I can very quickly go ahead and test my theory with the redstone. If I go ahead and give it redstone on and then give it something like oak logs that will then produce sawdust. So that is currently using power of course and this is set to redstone on. So if I flick the power on it is transmitting power. Then when I stop the lever, it's no longer transferring power. So that is exactly how I wanted that to work. All right, perfect. All right, and this is then how it looks. Each segment has their own enter cell. These will be turned to redstone on, so they will not be transferring power unless they have been given a redstone signal. And if you're wondering how to disconnect uh, the cell from the cable right here, just go over with the wrench, which can be made like so. Right click this, click this until it says IO mode off, and there you go, they have been disconnected. And I actually think that that is all the machines actually set up. Well, apart from this, but I'll do that afterwards. Because now comes a tricky part, and that is getting the items from the storage through pipes down into the system. Because I'll need to add, oh, I need to actually add power underneath here. Oh, then maybe running power underneath here would be better because I need to add an item input right there unless I do it down there somehow, but I don't think I can do that. I'll probably figure that out soon, but I basically need to get a bunch of exporters leading into the purification chamber. Oh boy. And the way I'm going to do that is either by making a bunch... Well, I'm going to need some exporters. Like I was saying, either by leading a ton of cabling from this part right underneath the drawers all the way under the machines here. And I think that might be the best, it's probably not the best way, but it's the easiest way. And I think, most importantly, that it would work. The thing is, the cable is coming from up there, but I'm sure I can probably lead the cable down even closer because the system is here oh dear uh maybe not right there oh but here is perfect okay awesome now i do believe it is important before i connect these two together right here that i down in the exporter below this right here that i set this to what it is supposed to export I don't want a bunch of random things entering. So the stuff that we want is iron, gold, copper, etc. This is some real pipe work right here. 
All right, so I want iron for this first one. So go ahead, set that right there, and then I need to basically continue this on over to this bit right here. I need to cut down here, place another exporter, get some gold. And then we set this one to gold, lead the cable all the way down like so, and then continue it over again. <laughs> and I'm going to fill out these spaces just to keep things a little bit neater. And then finally set this one to copper. Of course, the pipe will need to continue in this direction because we're going to have machines over here as well. Then over here, I think underneath this, we go ahead and turn and then lead it over to this section. Listen, there might be an easier way to do this. I'm sure there is, but I like running pipes. And then it's going to stop right there, having the final exporter be right there. And I've decided doing this way, leaving these blocks right here is a way, way easier way of doing things. All right, all of these has been set. Now I can go ahead and cover up the floorboards again. And now finally, the final thing that I need to do is set the input, actually this is wrong. I need to set the input to the bottom and then take gases input on the right. That is a very, very important detail that I made a mistake in. Gases, yep, in, uh, input from any side, that's fine. So all I need to do is change this to input on the bottom. Last but not least to make this work, we're gonna go ahead and connect this and that should make this machinery start running. All six sections are running. Um, we are, however... Per Please tell me we're generating enough power to keep up with this. We are, however, the issue that we might have is this can only transfer 1000 FE a tick. We're using... Uh, not enough energy to upgrade. Right. We may need some ender cells that are more than just starter. Okay, yeah, this is the issue. 1000 FE a tick. And these machines needed 32k FE a tick. I think I need to upgrade these ender cells. Okay, so this is a little bit of a bottleneck here. Even the hardened energy cell, which can output 10,000 FE a tick, it's not enough to power all these machines at once, and these machines has not even been upgraded, like, in any way. Oh, wait a minute, but these machines are... Hold on, okay, all of this is working. All of these machines... Wait, all of these machines are working perfectly. Hold up, what is going on here? What's the difference between these two? I am such a smurf. Yeah, remember this? This redstone setting? Redstone on? Yeah, I kind of made it so that you need to toggle the lever for things to work. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so this got everything that I just said about the 32,000 FE required and whatnot. None of that was correct. I just didn't flick the levers for the machines to turn on. Boom. All the machines are turning on. Not enough energy to operate, enough energy to operate, there we go, perfect. They are getting all the power that they need. Now, the question is, can our power plant keep up? Yes, it can. We have, we are not going below a 100 million FE and 104 million FE right here. That's awesome. That means we are generating plenty of power for these machines, all of these machines to operate at the exact same time. This is processing iron, this is processing gold, this is processing copper. This is not processing anything. Uh, that's a bit odd. Oh, that's because it... Oh! Wait, what have I done here? I did a little bit of an oopsie. I'm supposed to have this energy cell. Uh, all the way over here. Take this wrench. Then disconnect that. Reconnect this, disconnect this, and then reconnect that. There we go. Everything is working perfectly. 
Now all I need to do is keep an eye out for our coal production. If we're going to go down in the coal, that means obviously we're using coal, but the question is, are we using uh, too much coal? And we might be. This furnace might be way faster than what we need it to be, but I think it's fine. I think it is perfectly fine. We could make mini coal, which doesn't really seem to do anything other than generating energy. It doesn't seem like we can use it in furnaces. So yeah, I think this is fine. Now there's one final thing for me to set up, and that is to set up three of this setup right here. But I'm just gonna do that just like this. Watch this, I'm gonna stand right here. Actually, three back, there we go. Watch, three, two, one. And it has been done. Now everything is being worked on. The golden furnaces are working, nickel is being generated, aluminum is being treated, uh, silver dust is being treated, right? Right. Right. Oh. There we go. <laughs> you always miss something. But that, I would say, is a job well done. One thing that we did miss, though, is, of course, to set the black or white black white in the chest to the network back here so I mean we have the red and blue right here we might as well connect the black one to this there we go this is all going to be added to our drawers now so we should be able to see our ingots throughout go up which we can actually right there it looks like it's taking the gold first guys this is awesome there's something really, really satisfying, finishing something like this and having it look this clean. Hold up, why is this not working? Why are you not running? Uh, why are you not outputting to the top? Output to top. Ah. There we go. <laughs> Everything, yep, everything is working. I'll, I'll catch it if something bad happens. But guys, I think with that, I'm going to call this an episode. I was planning on also introducing some auto-crafting stuff, but I think we will have to wait for another time, because this has taken a lot longer than I thought it would. However, in the next episode, outside of doing auto-crafting, I want to very, very soon be taking a look at some endgame things. If we go down here, endgame, we have Project E, we have Dens Densitas Infinita. I'm probably butchering that. And then, of course, the ultimate armor, which would be awesome to start working towards on this. So I'm going to start uh, looking into how to start getting or, or and automating some of these things like Neutronium Ingot. Is that even possible to, to like craft, get, how do we get it? Things like that. I think that would be really, really cool. Crystal Matrix Block. Like how Nether Stars will need to auto automate some of that stuff. Infinity Ingot. Extreme Crafting. Infinity Catalyst, like, that's a lot here. So hopefully very, very soon we are going to be taking a look at that. And I just want to make sure, yep, we are actually keeping up with everything running. We're keeping up with power. That's awesome. But guys, like I said, that's going to do it for this episode. I really hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe if you're brand new, and enable those notifications so you don't miss the next episode. And I hope to see you in the next one. And by the way, if you have any tips or any recommendations for how or what to work towards when it comes to endgame stuff, please do let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, that's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, goodbye. Yeah.